Good morning. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the 11th Biennial Conference of the European Evaluation Society. Uh, as you know, the title of the conference is um, Evaluation for an Equitable World, Independence, Partnership, Participation. But let me first introduce myself. I am Claudine Voyazis, uh, President of the Society, and we are extremely pleased to welcome you all for this major event here in the wonderful city of Dublin in this spectacular convention center. And we thank you all for being here. For the next three days, we are going to have the opportunity to share with our colleagues. And let me tell you, we have colleagues from all over the world. We have colleagues from Australia. We have colleagues from Africa, from Asia, from North and South America. So we have the opportunity to share with them all our views on evaluation, our never-ending search for better methods, better ways to evaluate, and also our hopes to advance evaluation in order to be able to contribute to a better and more equitable world. So I have to stop here because we have a very busy morning. And uh, I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce to you Minister Holin. Minister Holin is Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, and he has kindly accepted to make the opening speech of the conference. Minister Holin. President of the European Evaluation Society, Claudine, uh, thank you for your kind words. I'd like to begin by extending on my own behalf and on behalf of the Government of Ireland a Cade Mila to Block Clear, a sincere and warm welcome to the City of Dublin and to Ireland. I know that over the next few days you'll be working very hard, but I hope that you will get the opportunity to walk across the bridge and see some of the delights of Dublin. And as you know, we need it. We need you to spend a few euros when you're here as well. Um, I understand from Claudine that um, you had hoped to have a reception in Dublin Castle, but for some reason you decided to do it in the Guinness Brewery instead. I, I don't know how that happened, but I'm sure you'll have a good time there. Can I also explain uh, for the Irish participants that the wet stuff falling from the sky this morning is rain? Uh, we, have, we have been unused to that uh, for a number of months, um, but I hope it doesn't impact on your enjoyment of Dublin. I was truly pleased to be asked to address the opening of this important 11th conference of the European Evaluation Society. The theme of the conference, Evaluation for an equi Equitable Society, is one that I think is uh, resonant with what we are trying to do as a government in Ireland, that is to restore an economy that is not only robust and sustainable, but equitable. In Ireland, in Europe, and in countries all over the world, evaluation has become an increasingly preeminent feature of political debate. Economic conditions are improving, and there are good reasons for optimism following the recent economic crisis that impacted so um, hard on our economy and many in Europe and across the world. But it does re remain critically important that governments and societies ensure that the resources, the scarce resources provided by our taxpayers are managed carefully and that we get optimum benefit and impact from the resources we deploy. I feel that it's an issue that evaluation has been called upon to make a real difference. Today, more than ever, there is a need to ensure quality in all the public services that we provide. Quality and transparency in all public expenditure that's made. The limited resources available are used effectively and efficiently to deliver effective public services to the citizens of all our countries who depend upon them. Evaluation is a key element to understanding how public resources are best used in Ireland. 
as in many other countries. A large share of public resources is targeted at helping people, improving life opportunities by investing in areas like education, health. It's part of the overall of an investment by the people in the fundamental building blocks of society. Evaluation is key to informing government about how best to allocate resources in pursuit of important social goals and how policies might be shared across uh, countries in order to better pursue the equitable goal that uh, your conference theme has set for us. I understand that the goal of the European uh, Evaluation Society is to stimulate and promote theory, practice and utilisation of high quality evaluation. It does so by bringing together academics, policy makers and practitioners from different professional sectors and backgrounds across many and varied fields and many and varied policy areas. The European Evaluation Society encourages links and collaborations between evaluators in different countries and within a range of unique and different institutions across the European Union. And I know from my conversation with Claudine this morning, very strong and firm links uh, across the world. This interaction provides people with the opportunity to share experiences and to realize that the problems and challenges that each of us encounter in our own sphere of work are not unique to us. And many will have path found uh, a solution to the challenges we face. The European Evaluation Society also carries out important work in seeking to develop the capacity and professionalism of those who are engaged in the work of evaluation. I hope that those of you who are participating uh, in today's conference and in the pre-conference workshops feel that you have benefited and are bringing um, shared experiences to bear on common problems. Here in Ireland, the government that I'm a, a member of established the Irish Government Economic and Evaluation Service two years ago in 2012. The overarching goal of the Irish Government Economic and Evaluation Service is to build capacity and expertise within national government in the first instance and to enhance the role of economics and value for money uh, analytics in public policy making generally <clears throat> across all spheres of public administration. It's a cross-governmental service. It currently involves nearly all central government departments and offices of state and all of them have established uh, and designated individual people uh, to be involved in this important work. Within these units established across government, there is a mix of professions, some with many years experience, others newly recruited graduates uh, from a variety of spheres. However, in case anyone might think that Ireland has only recently um, come to appreciate the importance and value of proper evaluation. <clears throat> I want to emphasize that for many years, Ireland uh, has had processes, procedures, guidance, and so on to ensure that public money, money is well and properly spent. I think what the Economic and Evaluation Service brings is a renewed determination to ensure that decision makers have sufficient economic and evaluation capacity and support to make decisions that are appropriate within their own spheres of work. This increased capacity is intended to support continued improvements in policy design and formulation. The professional element is also important. Those civil servants who are members of the Economic and Evaluation Service should see themselves as having specialist skills that are of key importance on how policy is developed and, equally importantly, how policy decisions are implemented. They should regard themselves as part of a network of skilled specialists. They should engage 
in open policy discussions <coughs> with experts outside the civil service, with academia, policy specialists, stakeholders, to ensure that policy making in Ireland reflects not only best international practice, but the aspirations and will of general society. Continuing professional development, further training, events such as this one all add to the store of resource available to specialists in this area. It's vital that those who are conducting evaluation work have the right structures and frameworks in which to work. To that end, in Ireland, a new public spending code has been published, which brings together all of the value for money standards for expenditure at all stages of the life cycle, from ex ante appraisal right through to evaluation and post-project review. An important innovation is how we go about our business in a way that is focused, focused on outcomes. These are designated and are designed to answer specific issues of policy configuration or delivery and complement the more extensive value for money evaluations that are undertaken as part of the full range of VFM questions, such as rationale, efficiency, and effectiveness. So how does all the, this work fit into the budgetary decision-making process and the budgetary decisions we make? Since the outset, outset of the economic crisis, many countries have undertaken comprehensive spending reviews. The purpose of these spending reviews have been to conduct root and branch analysis, root and branch examination of all areas of public expenditure in order to provide government with a list of options to reduce expenditure. From the onset of this government and the creation of my new department, uh, our view of public expenditure was everything should be a, a blank page. Not that departments or agencies of state would simply replicate what they've always done, but evaluate everything they do to see is it still fit for purpose? Is it affordable? Is it the priority? In the post-economic crisis environment, spending reviews should not be regarded simply as a tool for expenditure reduction. Instead, they are and should be a feature of the budget preparation process as a matter of norm. Spending reviews provide governments with the opportunity to examine how public resources have been used, to set out how public resources should be used, to set priorities, to address issues like equity that you've placed before us in the dialogue today, and to examine where new spending proposals for new policy initiatives can be accommodated within the expenditure horizon. In recent years, we in Ireland have had plenty of experience conducting spending reviews, as every public servant in this room, I'm sure, will sigh when he or she hears that. In fact, the third such review will be completed in the next couple of weeks here. The importance and relevance of spending reviews has been recognised in the, in the Irish government since we came to office in 2011. It's an important part of the entire budgetary process and of the process of renewal of public administration in Ireland. Evaluation is core to good spending decisions. To be fully optimised, spending reviews require relevant timely and high quality evaluation and good spending programs to be uh, thought out and set out. In Ireland, the experience of spending reviews has taught us that the evaluation groundwork should be undertaken over a long period of time, outside of the formal review period. In the years between spending reviews, it's important that departments and in particular, members of the Economic and Evaluation Service are engaged in high quality, relevant work which will be available for future um, expenditure reviews. President, so far, 
I've talked about how we in Ireland have, have, have set out to try and improve capacity for conducting evaluation work here in a way in which changes the way we conduct budgeting and policy formulation. There is, of course, another forum in which evaluation can play an important role in terms of informing and, and focusing on in-depth discussions of public policy. That forum is, of course, national parliaments. I'm especially pleased that one of the round tables that I see on your program here is engaging parliamentarians for an enabling environment for, for evaluation. I anticipate that this will be one of the most interesting uh, discussions for participants here as people from different environments, different parliamentary traditions across Europe and beyond consider how the evaluation processes and cultures uh, in their sphere of work uh, can be best applied. Ireland will be represented at, on this panel <clears throat> by the Minister of State in my own department, Mr Simon Harris TD, and he will be able not only to draw from his uh, relatively recent ministerial experience, but also from his experience as a former member of the Committee of Public Accounts of Parliament. That's the parliamentary committee that is tasked with reporting, analysing and evaluating the reports of our Controller and Auditor General. I've always believed in the important role that Parliament plays and I know from both opposition and from a government perspective, there is often an adversarial relationship at important parliamentary committees. So it is important to bring about a culture change, particularly in a, in a time of scarce resources, that true analysis is made of policy options that involve um, the democratic space, community generally, in presenting their case so that Parliament can make uh, objective decisions and recommendations to government. One of the reforms that this government has introduced has been in how we lay down foundations for new whole-of-year budgetary processes uh, to be undertaken. And that will mean, and is in place, um, a presentation of budgetary options to Parliament well outside the normal budgetary space, and I'm very conscious that two weeks from today I'll be standing up in Parliament introducing the 2015 budget with my colleague Michael Noonan. Um, but, but we need no longer focus on one day's announcement. There should be a very open discussion on policy options um, for the entirety of the parliamentary year, and that will be aided and abetted by the work of proper um, whole of government, whole of year evaluation. So evaluation plays a critical role in all of this. Evaluation can form an important component of not only examining how public resources were used in the past, but how spending programmes might evolve and be developed to have better effect and better social outcomes. In many countries, recent experience and reforms have highlighted the importance of having high quality, relevant and timely evaluation available to policymakers. That's not to say that it's easy, that um, simply having an evaluation made makes choices easy for government in times of limited or scarce resources, which looks like our horizon for the foreseeable future. And even the process of evaluation itself is a very difficult task. It's very difficult to get it right. Nonetheless, these evaluations are vital if we want to improve the quality and efficacy of the services that we provide to our citizens and upon which many of our citizens truly depend for their quality of life. In this opening address, it's been my intention to try and set out some of the main ways in which ev evaluation has developed within our own governmental systems in Ireland. Scattered among you are various civil servants from my own department, from other government departments and, and um, agencies of state. And I encourage you to quiz them fully. 
share experiences with them. And I hope they, after their experiences here in the next few days, will be better equipped uh, to the important task of ensuring that policy makers uh, are fully equipped in the best possible way to make the best decisions that benefit all our peoples. I wish you well in the few days you have here. Thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you very much, Minister Olin. This was a great, great speech, very encouraging for evaluation, evaluation in general, and evaluation in, uh, in Ireland. It was exactly the speech that we needed for this opening. Uh,